the traditional life is becoming modernized and cold and electronic and like unfeeling in a way. Right? Right. I'm a director living in Taiwan. Hey everybody, I'm Luke. I'm a cinematographer living in Taipei. And today we're talking about Rebels of the Neon God, directed by Cai Mingliang. Qing Sao Nian Luo Sa, Cai Mingliang, director's movie. This was uh, requested for us to review, and I had never seen this film before. Oh yeah. And I think we talked before about how I don't normally connect very much with Cai Mingliang's films because they're so arty. Yeah. But I really love this one. Because. It's more accessible than the other films, I think. But I mean, I think it's a fantastic movie. It has more of a plot than his other films. Yeah. It's it's about a a boy who kind of lives with his family, and he's uh, he's studying to take his college exams, and he kind of sees along the 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 city. He he kind of notices a like a gangster, mm -hmm. and he becomes fascinated with him, and he kind of starts following him around and observing his life. And like all the things that he does, like stealing from people, mm -hmm. uh, dating a girl, mm -hmm. uh, and and it's you kind of can see his obsession with this person whose life he wishes he had, but he can't really be that way. And then because Timing Now uses a lot of like uh, queer gay themes in his films, mm -hmm. there is like an attraction element to it where he's obsessed with him and wants to be him, but it's. Kind of, you kind of get the feeling it's because he's actually in love with this, right? This this man. You know, uh, I believe I watched this movie a long time ago, and yeah. I didn't realize it's a gay issue movie. It's very in subtle. It's underneath, though. Right in the back, 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 back then, I thought it's just a guy he wanted to revenge because the the, the gangster broke his right, father's that's how car. Right, it starts. So he first notices him right? because the gangster breaks the mirror on his dad's car. Right, so. In the beginning, I just felt he wanted to get some revenge for his father. Right. And then, it, and some weirds happen. And also, there's a girl in the between, right? Yeah. So, in normally you will think of, oh, maybe this guy, one the, of these, the, young the boy girl. Is obsessed with the girl, but no. Actually. But reality is not. It it left a lot of hints on it. And if you don't get those hints, you don't realize, oh, this guy might be a gay. Yeah. But in back the time. Back before, like decades ago, then people will not really knowing this yeah, is a gay sure. story. But if you did realize that, then wow, this make wonderful, well, wonderful story. I think that brings up an excellent point about why this movie is so good, because it has this plot right where with these characters that are in love, and there's definitely a story to it. But there's so much under the surface, yeah, which. Because Timing Now is an art film director, he really knows how to take make something with a lot of layers. Mm -hmm. So like the relationship between the gangster and his girlfriend and their other friend, right. really complicated. And then the the relationship with the boy that's watching them, there's just so many different emotions and ways to think about what's going on. It's not very clear mm -hmm. what all the characters are feeling. And mm -hmm. I think that the reason that the director can have this come across so well is because. He's so used to making films that are more abstract, right? Right. So he he really understands like symbolism, and he really gets these performances out of these actors that are not so straightforward about what they're thinking and feeling. Like mm -hmm. you can tell they're very confused, and they have so many different there's so many different motivations behind why they do the things they do. There's a lot of different like in the parents then point of view. No, there's also a lot of interesting happen between right. their sons and even those parents in themselves. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's so interesting because yes, this is how we live. Like in Asia, in our in our country, uh, I mean in Asia culture is yeah. like more like you know the the the, the mother worry about her own son, right, yeah, yeah. and trying to you know you know she go to the temple yeah. and then then do Praise a lot for of him, make sure he becomes normal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the father wanted to take care of his son, but he didn't know how. So something like I give you the food, but the son didn't really want those food. Yeah. A lot of little detail happen, and I really love this those kind of. Yeah, this is how we just we are not used to be you know speak straightforward. Especially the way that people are in Taipei specifically. The film is shot in Taipei, and it captures Taipei. Even it's made 1992. 1992. 
it captures the the feeling of living in Taipei so perfectly. Like the way that people interact with each other and like they become friends, but then they don't really know each other and they don't mm -hmm. they don't say what they're thinking and they're feeling. And the parents and the children don't they you know they try to communicate but they can't. Yeah. Like the the mom is like t tries to yell at the son like hey you need to do this you need to do that and he just doesn't want to hear it and she doesn't know how to express like hey I've been really worried about you like yeah, people yeah, don't do yeah. that. You know? Yeah. So, so, it's, it's so, so it just captures it really well. And then the look of the film it's a lot of it shot at night and there's a lot of rain and then the, it uses as the title suggests it uses a lot of like the neon lights right. the construction lights like flashing reflections yeah and it really gives you the feeling of like this kind of city where people are totally lost in in the crowd right yeah and also it's shot in the uh, ximending wanghua yeah which is tons of people so there's and always people everywhere also it, because the story is around the teenagers i mean yeah. not adults so it reflects like how the I mean, a boy become a dog, the, the, the transition in yeah. his life, like how he find himself. Right. It's kind of very, very interesting because everybody has this own experience of becoming a dog, right? And in Taipei, in this city, is so, I mean, it modernized in, because Taipei is, as a city, you trying to be modern city, right? In yeah. bad time, bad 20 years ago, and then oh. this is all things happen. People, from the countryside, moving to a Taipei, try trying to trying to get used get to living in the city. city, and also people is living in the city is still kind of confusing. What can I do in the city, right? Yep. Like the parent want his 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 son to study harder to yep. go to the college, but someone from outside moving in the city is just having fun, like enjoy like the gangsters. Yeah. And the, the, girl, the, the boy wanted to be like those, those, those gangsters, like, like free, like be free. Why should I have to be studied so hard? Like, yeah. There's a lot of confused around well, in these movies. And now so that you nice. mention it, like a lot of the shots are all of these, like of all of construction sites, right? Yeah. So it's about the transition from being a child to being an adult. And you have all these film of all this construction. And at that time in the 90s, that was the time when Taiwan was moving sure. from a small country into a more like economically prosperous one. Just like how the, the characters are transitioning from being children to being adults. So there's a lot of hint in this movie. Yeah. And Chan Mian used it very wisely. You don't even yeah. tell, oh, when you finish looking, oh, when you re kind of reviewing, then you find out, oh, this is have meanings. Why this construction? Yeah. Why water falling from the sea, from the ground and a lot yeah. of. I think that's the things. advantage to having an art director direct a film is that they put so much symbolism mm -hmm. in their movies, like all the different things that are happening. You can really think about, okay, what does this mean? There is definitely a reason be behind so many of the choices that he makes. Like, yeah, the water on the ground of the guy's apartment, yeah. the cockroaches everywhere, the just even. Even things like the setting, like the arcade that they're in, the, the, there must be some reason behind all of these different choices because he's such a smart director. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I think it's a good, I think this movie for me too is a good example of if you are a, an artistic director who really likes to, you know, sometimes I like to make things that are not so straightforward, a little more confusing. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's a good example of how if you just try a little bit to make your film a little bit more accessible Assist. to the wider public right you know you'll make something that a lot of people can watch and, and enjoy but you can you don't have to compromise you can still put in mm -hmm. a lot of those artistic uh, tendencies that you have you won't if you if you love doing that you won't lose it just no. by trying to make somebody make a film that that people can all understand understand you know? because you can you can make an understandable plot and then put in maybe some some artistic elements into that film. Oh, you know? right. So that's how you balance all yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. You put your artistic thing in detailed hints. But yeah. the storyline is more accessible. Yeah, yeah. So but I think this is a good uh, kind of... Of course, if you want to make an abstract film, like a David Lynch kind of movie that people don't get, if that's what you really want to do, that's fine. But I also think there's some value in doing a film in this way where you... Mm -hmm. the, everybody can understand the story, but you're still putting in your artistic tendencies. So for me, as a director, I really learned a lot from watching this movie and thinking like, yeah, you know what? I think there's a, there's a good 
there's something good about trying hard to make something that a lot of people can enjoy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And and being so defiant and being so like, oh well, the audience just doesn't understand me. It, you kind of hurt your yourself sometimes. No, you you don't necessarily to put those kind of pressure yourself. Exactly. Sometimes you just need to make it easier and then also try to have this kind of limitation. Well, sometimes this is a, a sort of limitation. Yeah, right? exactly. It's an artistic but, limitation. But it's good. It's it's yeah. it's, it's, it's helping you improve yeah, exactly so you put this thing on yourself where it's like i gotta make a movie that uh, people will enjoy and understand and that's a that's a that's a skill that's a challenge and also you don't miss point it's, i think uh chai Binyang is really make his point about right the story is it's about the children right and also yeah. the children has confused of his own emotion i really appreciate this kind of it. and also the music of oh, the, right over the, the film is so so fantastic i i think it's because the neon god is a child's god and also we has a lot of temple music right like oh, okay in the religion so is that music connected to music that you hear in the temple yeah a little bit but not really like you can kind of pick out little elements in the oh, music like oh. oh this kind of music is like sometimes you will hear in the temple it's like droning kind of because it, it's um the music in the film is like a little bit synthetic right it's played on like a keyboard or something it's not very complicated but it's very droning mm -hmm. popular you know it it kind of reminded me a little bit of um john carpenter's music who uh, john carpenter he did like the thing and um halloween oh, it's like thing. horror, horror oh. movie music and he uses the same kind of like a keyboard okay to play his music and he plays it himself he makes his own music for his movies mm. and this music is kind of similar because it's simple but it uses like a kind of very droning, like repeating yeah. format, yeah. and it kind of puts you in this interesting mood with yeah. the film. It's I really, really like those techniques. You, you reuse the music, yeah, because it like, make me has memory of the music because right. it repeats several times. Sometimes yeah. I don't really recall what the music is playing in the music in the yeah. in the movie, yeah, 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 yeah. but in this kind of way to showing the movie to showing the music. Is yeah. a, I think personally think it's a good way to show in the It fits for this one too because it's simple enough and he doesn't reuse it all the time but he reuses it at the right moments yeah. to kind of repeat the theme of the film repeat the theme of the film and I love I love what you just said about how it's like the temple music mm -hmm. but then he made it kind of modernized, modernized which is it. such it's a good connection between like that and like the neon oh, god so right because it's like the city city like he made he took this traditional thing and he made it like modern city kind of yeah. electronic yeah 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 it's yeah, all yeah, yeah. I, I, it, yeah, it's yeah, great exactly. it's all about how like the traditional life is becoming modernized and cold and electronic and like unfeeling in a way right right yeah it's great so every detail is fantastic we really enjoy this yeah kind. there was a very funny thing i read when i was reading up a little bit about this movie is somebody said this movie is like uh, the movie Akira. You know the movie Akira? I, I know. Yeah. Japanese animation. Yeah, yeah. it's right? like Akira without sci-fi. <laughs> <laughs> a little really? bit. Right? Kind of, in a way, because it's all about like the young kids. Right, like, right, right. Driving and then driving the motorcycle. The motorcycle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's kind of a stretch, but I can see why people would say that. It's kind of funny to think about it like that. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> oh. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, if you want us to review any films from Asia, Taiwan, China, Hong Kong, please let us know in the comments. This film was a, was a suggestion from our viewers, so we reviewed Good it. Good suggestion. Good, yeah. Great suggestion. I don't know if I would have watched it otherwise, so please let us know what film you'd like us to discuss, and we'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Like, share, subscribe. Bye.